I may not be telling you, my dear friends, anything, but when I woke up this morning, I felt one of my ankles, one of my wrists, my knee was complaining, my neck was complaining, not because I did anything to it yesterday, because I slept on it the wrong way, apparently. One of those little things they don't warn you about as you get older is suddenly you discover parts of your body that you always just took for granted. They were always just there, and they worked like they were supposed to, quietly and efficiently, and then suddenly, they may not hurt all the time, but you know that they're there. This, I think, is one of the useful messages of Easter, believe it or not. One of my colleagues uh, who was at a clergy meeting yesterday was saying that in a Bible study recently, he had been talking to people about the season after Easter, and somebody mentioned that in the Apostles' Creed, it talks about the resurrection of the body. And this person, by whatever it was that he or she said, kind of made it seem like he or she imagined Jesus after Easter to be a kind of friendly ghost. That, that there was something different about Jesus. Now he was sort of spiritual and airy or whatever. And, and my colleague was saying that he felt compelled to preach on Sunday about the bodily resurrection, the fact that, that Jesus comes back in person. In fact, in sun, on Sunday, you'll recall in the lesson, it talks about him eating a piece of fish. It's a, a random thing that seems to be pulled out of the air, but it was meant to say, look, this isn't like some, some, some spiritual phantom that's come back to tell us to be nice to each other. This is God still in person with us. God who has now gone into heaven in a physical body. This is important for you and for me in the season after Easter as we try to figure out what it means to us. It's very tempting, I think, particularly for us to try to make it into something sort of spiritual and metaphorical. Well, it's about new life. Maybe you'll get a new attitude. No, it really is about something that's meant to be embodied and physical for each one of us. When Jesus says in the, the lesson this morning, I am the bread of life. Anyone who believes in me will never be hungry or thirsty. Those are real physical things that we can understand. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily that God is going to provide us manna from heaven every day to ensure that we're not hungry. But recall, dear friends, what St. Teresa of Avila said. We are the hands of God in the world. If, in fact, the message is that God is physically with us all the time, then the needs that we see around us must also be part of what we are called to be dealing with. You and I are meant to live in embodied faith. It's about what we do, how we get our hands dirty, how we bring something real into the world that is the, uh, the healing of the world. That isn't just about saying, to some, as it says somewhere else in one of the letters of St. Paul, uh, you know, be filled and go on your way and be happy to the poor who don't have anything. No, it really is about seeing how we can meet those needs for one another as much as for those who are the sort of nameless poor out there in the world. Whoever we meet, we are meant to be the embodied presence of God for that person, and that person is meant to be the embodied presence of God for us. If not, then what are we doing here? Why don't we just go home and sit in our room and think nice thoughts and imagine the Spirit of God is around us? It's only when we meet the other believers, the other followers of Jesus, other human bodies who are just like us, only not at all like us, that we are able to see what it is that God intends each one of us to do and intends all of us to do collectively. So the next time you hear one of those metaphors that Jesus uses about something physical, the shepherd, the gate, the bread, the vine, we hear a lot of those in the season after Easter. I encourage you to think about it as something real. Think about the last time was you saw a vine or a gate or a loaf of bread and how it felt, how real it was there in front of you. And how perhaps that is the way we should be trying more and more to imagine God's presence with us not just lost in the ether someplace, but right here, right now, physically among us. Something we can't ignore, something that we can't get around, and yet something that we desire deeply. Amen.